So it's finally time for another video. I know it's been a while, uh, but today we're going to work on an exciting ZX Spectrum board, which is this Toast Rack board from uh, ZX Spectrum 120K. With this one, I've got uh, another board from the same customer, which also needs to be refurbished and maybe repaired. I'm not sure, I don't know. So I haven't checked uh, if these work. All right, so this is a Toast Rack board. I don't think it's a big problem to test it as is. So I'm using this composite video cable composite video on the toast rack board is on the DIN output I'm connecting it to the composite video cable I'm adding power and I need uh, the heatsink because the 7805 voltage regulator is on it this is all from the customer itself and when I power it on let's see if we get output yeah we get output let, let me show you again you can see it booting <clears throat> right so that seems to work just fine let me connect the keyboard so we can see if it actually responds as it should yeah it just this uh, seems to work fine so this is mainly a refurbished job but i think it would be nice to see for you the other board the 48k board i'm not going to test as is because uh, you never know how much these capacitors have been used and so i always start with replacing the capacitors nowadays because these are over 40 years old so, so what i will do is i will start with the 48k board and see if it works uh, after replacing the capacitors and then head over to the toast rack board for the refurbishment. So let's start with this board and get all the capacitors off. All the capacitors are off, board seems uh, really uh, empty, <laughs> uh, but let's uh, put a new ones on. Uh, check out the capacitor map on Vitalite, just google for it and you'll find uh, pictures where you can see where every capacitor should go. Really useful, you're really handy.
right, let's get a diagnostic card. You can find the ZX die card on the web shop as well. Let's see what this board does. It's actually working. So that's great news. Let's see if the memory is working fine or not. No errors yet. Right, seems to work just fine. It's great. Yeah. So no uh, Z80 uh, error in the M1 line, for example. Um, now we're going to test the keyboard, which is important because the, those features, functions can uh, be faulty in the ULA chip as well. And then we're going to test the uh, loading a game from tape. I can hear the speaker as well. That was great, that works. Right. Let's see if the tape lo loads as well. Yeah, it works. So this board is almost finished. Uh, just need to uh, put the heatsink back and use, uh, put the ULA chip in the socket and add a heatsink to it. So we're going to use this co thermal compound and some hot glue. Uh, sorry, super glue. So unfortunately, both uh, boards seem to be working just fine. And I say unfortunately because I like the challenge and this is just the normal work, which I do like, so that's not an issue, but for the video it might be more fun uh, if I can actually show a defect and repair it. Alright, so this works just fine. Let's get the ULA socket out and let's put a heatsink on the ULA chip. Yeah, right. So that's okay. Uh, the first test was successful with this. Uh, let's put the heatsink in. We have to cut a slight piece of it. Not too much. And then I'm going to uh, file this away because really sharp edges on it. it can damage the board or it can damage your fingers. So let's put it on. So, now we're done. So I think this board has been successfully refurbished.
right so that board has been done let's grab the other one and we already know the board is working so let's do the same let's power on the soldering iron again and let's get all the capacitors off Let's make sure we can see something. And yeah, it's working just fine. Let's be lazy and just put the heatsink on while the chip is in the socket. It's easy enough. Right, so the board seems to be working just fine. I will do some more tests, but I will do it on the other side of the room with uh, some interfaces to make sure everything is working just fine. And I need to check if the, the socket is not uh, too high, because I think it's about three or four millimeters higher than the, uh, the easy sockets that you can buy nowadays. So this board has been refurbished as well. Okay, so hold on. I just forgot two small things. That is the DC socket for this board. And the Enrainer, and I think that's, oh, there's one more, there's one more thing, just a second. These parts here, I will explain uh, what they're for. Let's start with the DC socket. All right, so I got a ZXAY here. So we have some uh, stereo sound. And eh, a pro mini prototype that I use for testing. All right. We're going to load a specific game to see the problem with the Enrainer. So I have a folder here called Enrainer and we're going to load Robocop 3. So some games uh, that have been written for the plus three actually have problems with running on a toast track or plus two, the gray plus two. And this is one of them. You can already see it on display. And that's the issue with the original PAL chip here. It doesn't take into account the specific signal that causes this raining. So we're going to replace that PAL chip and we need to add a small wire. And then uh, that problem should be gone. So let's try it out.
Right, what do you think? Will it work? And now let's load up the same program again. All right, let's see, do we still have the same problem or is it completely gone now? I don't see anything, so that's good. No problems. Yes. So the raining is vanished, it's solved. And the chip looks quite nice, it has a small uh, Unrainer logo on it. So that's good. Uh, I think that was all I needed to own. There's one, one, one more thing, one more thing. When the TA2000 chip has been used, they forgot two parts. And that's this inductor and this small capacitor here. I'm going to add those and when you add those, you, you get rid of the uh, blue and yellow uh, ghosting uh, next to each pixel. Uh, it will improve the, uh, the video output quite a bit. So there will be one attached to this pin here. That's one. The other one goes to pin eight. I don't want to move the board because everything is attached already, so let's try it this way. All right. And that should be it. And let's see what the result is. Can we see it already? It looks already better. I think it looks a lot better. Let's see. Yeah, it's a lot better. Can you see it? There's no more yellow and blue ghosting next to all the pixels. This is way, way better. You can see it directly. So two small parts, uh, the, the, the inductor I'm using is quite thick, I think there will be uh, smaller parts instead of that one, but this is so much better. And uh, even the capture device picks it up way better than it did before, so I like it. Yeah, look at that. That's how it should look. And of course there's not much color in this picture, but there's a bit, you can see it now. It's a lot better, and on composite video, this is a, this is a big improvement. So the final one is the um, improvement to detach the audio. We have to detach one leg and put it to that diode there. Okay, it's out. I'm not sure if it's long enough, but we'll see. No, it's not long enough. But okay, in that, in that case, we'll use part of a re resistor or something. Uh, let's grab one. And then connect it to the diode. So this way, the uh, audio signal is detached from the video signal, uh, but there, it's rerouted. So the modulator still has the audio signal on the output. I'm not sure if we can detect this on screen, but let's try it out. Maybe there's less interference, but the picture is a lot stable, more stable than it was, so that's great. Let's load up a demo. Ah, that looks great. So this machine has been refurbished completely. Uh, I think I've done everything now, put on a label here. Let me know what you think. If you liked the video, please click like. If you um, want to subscribe, you can click the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.